Okay, in this uh, video, I'm going to show you how to determine the empirical molecular formulas from percent composition data. So we have a sample that's been analyzed, and we've been given the percent composition. We said it was found here to contain 24.74% potassium, 34.76% manganese, and 40.50% of oxygen. And we've also told that the molecular weight of the compound is 158.03 grams per mole, and they want to know what is the empirical and the molecular formulas for the compound. Now, here we have a percent composition data that we've been given, and this question is very similar to the mass data. When you're given the mass data and you want to find the empirical and molecular formula, the only thing here is you've been given the percent data, and there's one little trick that you need to remember that will make your life a lot easier to solve this problem, is if we just assume that the total mass of a sample, or the sample that we've been given, if we just assume the total mass of the sample is 100 grams. Now, it doesn't tell us that the total mass of the sample is 100 grams, and doesn't tell us what the total mass of the sample is at all, but we can just assume here that the total mass of the sample is 100 grams, and if the total mass of the sample is 100 grams, and 24.74% of it is potassium, then we know that we have 24.74 grams of potassium. And we can do the same thing for all the other elements. We can just drop the percent and convert directly to grams because we assume that it's a 100 gram sample. If 34.76% of a 100 gram sample is manganese, then we know that we have 34.76 grams of manganese. And we can do the same thing for oxygen, 40.50% of it is oxygen, and it's a 100 gram sample total, so we know, therefore, that we have 40.50 grams of oxygen. Okay, now, for a chemical formula, because we want to get the empirical and the molecular formulas, we know that a chemical formula tells us the ratio of the number of atoms of each element, or really the number of atoms of each element in the chemical formula or in the chemical compound. And, um, it's not a ratio of the mass, it doesn't tell us the mass of each element. So in order to do this problem, we need to convert all of our grams, all of our gram values, to moles, and therefore we therefore then we can compare and get our chemical chem our empirical and our molecular formulas. So we're going to convert our grams to moles. So we know one mole of potassium has a weight, molecular weight, of 39. Whoops. 0 0.10 grams, cancel the grams, and we know that our sample contains 0 0.63 moles of potassium. We can do the same thing for the manganese. We're going to convert the grams to moles. We know that one mole of manganese, if we just look on our periodic table, manganese has a molar mass of 54 point nine grams grams cancel once again and we are left once again with having 0 0.63 moles all right and we do the same thing for the oxygen data we know for oxygen we're going to convert the grams to moles of oxygen one mole of oxygen has a molar mass has a mass of 16 grams grams cancel, we're left with moles, and in this case we have 2.53 moles, okay? So that is um, uh, the first step really is to convert from per percent to grams, which you can do if you just assume you have a 100 gram sample, you can convert directly from percent to grams, and then you convert from grams to moles. Now we want to compare the ratio of the number of moles of potassium to manganese to oxygen. And the way we can do that, very simply, is just to divide each of our molar values by our smallest molar value. And you can see our smallest molar value is 0 0.63. So we're going to divide each of the molar values by 0 0.63 moles. And the moles cancel. And therefore, we have 1. And we can do the same thing for the manganese. Divide by the smallest molar value, or the smaller molar value is still 0 0.63 moles. 
moles cancel, and we have one again. We're going to do the same thing for the oxygen. We're going to divide by our smallest molar value. Our smallest molar value is 0 0.63 moles, and 2.53 divided by 0 0.3 is just about 4. So we know that the ratio of potassium to manganese to oxygen in our sample is 1 to 1 to 4, and that is simply our empirical formula. That is the lowest whole number ratio. So we know that the empirical formula is K M oops N O4. So the empirical formula of our compound is K M N O4. And now we in order to get the molecular formula, we have to compare the molecular weight to the empirical formula weight, so I'm write down empirical weight, and if we compare the molecular weight to the empirical formula weight, that will help us determine the molecular formula, and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So we know the molecular weight, we were given the molecular weight is 158.03 grams, and first we have to figure out what the empirical formula weight is, or the empirical weight, so we can figure that out by figuring out the molar mass of manganese, uh, or potassium per manganate in this case. So our empirical weight, we just get all of our values, one manganese, one potassium, four oxygens, off the periodic table, and we find out that the empirical formula weight in this case is also 158.03. All right, so you'll notice in this case the the, the molecular weight that we were given and the empirical weight are the same. And that tells us, therefore, that the empirical formula and the molecular formula are the same. This turns out to be one. So if you think of it a little bit technically, you can say that in your molecular formula, because we didn't know that they were the same, but in the molecular formula, we have one empirical formula unit. And if we compare the molecular weight to the empirical weight, and they're the same, then we know that the empirical formula and the molecular formula are the same. So the molecular formula is also K and then O4. All right, so this is our molecular formula. It has the same empirical formula. Basically, it tells us that the molecular formula cannot be reduced to a smaller ratio. And we know that they're the same because the molecular weight, which was given in the problem, and the empirical weight, which we calculated from our empirical formula, are the same. So the ratio of empirical formula units to the molecular formula is 1. All right? So there you go. Follow those steps. I think you'll be successful. Thanks for watching. And that's the end.